Hello and welcome to my review of the AUX Death Dread. One of these models will set you back £32.50. I know it's a huge amount of money if you can get them in a start collecting set or um, whatever. I think this Death Dread does come in the start collecting uh, box set for £55 or so. That's a, a, an incredible saving that uh, start collecting set. I uh, strongly recommend it. Um, but if you can get it in some kind of set, I'd suggest you do that because £32.50 is a fair chunk of money. Um, it is way bigger than a Dreadnought though. It gives a Redemptor a run for its money. What we'll do is we'll look at all of the detail on this uh, Death Dread. We'll compare it with a load of killer cans and other Orc models and then we'll go into uh, all of its rules found in the codex. So first of all, um, let's look at this detail. I've equipped mine with, yeah, claws and buzz saws and, you know, it's a melee focused um, dreadnought. You, you can, of course, opt to have, you know, big shooters or range weapons, uh, either the top or, or the uh, lower half of it. Um, instead of melee focused, if I was to get another one, I probably would do that um, just for, you know, aesthetic purposes, not not for game purposes. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a fair amount of detail on it. I, I always loved the Death Dreads when, even when they were in their metal, having all those arms, but they were metal and they were a bit of a pain uh, just to keep, um, you know, intact really more than anything. But uh, I like the massive engines on the back here. I like the exhausts. Uh, I like the, the weapons themselves. Um, looks really, really cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's the Death Dread. Uh, let's do uh, some size comparisons uh, with the Killer Can. So here is a Killer Can. It uh, does dwarf a Killer Can. It's uh, even though it's on the exactly the same base, which I, I don't know. I question that. Maybe it should be on a slightly bigger base. Um, but yeah, it's um, probably one and a half times taller than a De Killer Can. But yeah, massive, massive thing. Uh, but yeah pretty massive as far as so yeah um, pretty big unit you're not gonna miss one of these on the battlefield and um, compared to other orc units then so here's my knob it's uh, much much bigger than this knob as you can see you can just imagine orc boys squeezing into the uh, you know can type uh, contraption um, compared to a normal orc boy a Gretchen and uh, a war boss as well War boss is a fair fair amount smaller. What what I don't get is um, you, you don't usually see any war bosses mounted in uh, Death Dreads or Morkonauts or Stompers even. And it would be nice to see some kind of war boss in one of these big uh, metal contraptions or even some kind of big mech or, or something. Uh, that would be cool. You see them on bikes. Uh, you see them in Mega Armor. I'd like to see Games Workshop take them to the next level and put them in the, the big... Um, machine contraptions. Just put a size comparison next to the uh, Morkonaut, which is a fair bit bigger. So there you go. It's probably two and a half times bigger. Well, maybe maybe two from there. Yeah, it's just less than two times bigger than the, the uh, Death Dread, but it's got a lot of um, thickness to it. A much bigger base. I think that's the Knight base, Knight Titan base. I think that's the Imperial Knight base. And then I'd like to show some size comparisons next to, uh, you know, normal Space Marine Dreadnought. And of course, a uh, Redemptor, Primaris Redemptor Dreadnought, which is a fair bit bigger. Um, yeah, that's quite a crazy size comparison when you when you think about it. You think about how big these Primaris Dreadnoughts are. They're bigger than Leviathan Dreadnoughts. Um, but uh, yeah, absolutely huge, isn't it, compared to uh, even Death Dread, which was, yeah, it dwarfs a normal Space Marine Dreadnought, doesn't it? And the final size comparison I always like to make is just with the usual uh, three Imperial models. So you've got Legacy Space Marine there on the left. Uh, you've got uh, Slime Arbo and then you've got um, an intercessor. So yeah, it does dwarf the Primaris Space Marine. So if you're up against the new Primaris Force, uh, it's still gonna be heads and shoulders. It's uh, just gonna be a fair bit smaller than a um, Primaris Redemptor. Now we've ended up into my part of the review where I will go through all of the rules for uh, the Death Dread. It is a heavy support choice and it will cost you five power points or 55 points in match play. 
Its stat line reads, movement of 6 inches, weapon skill 3+, plus, ballistic skill 5+, plus, strength 5, toughness 7, 8 wounds, 2 attack, leadership 7, and a save of 3+. Plus. That's fairly decent. I would have preferred it to have 3 attacks. Uh, it's good that it's got 8 wounds. Toughness is nice. The weapon skill is very good. Um, and the save is, is, is all right too. The unit contains one death dread. It can include one additional death dread for a power rating of plus five or two additional death dreads for a power rating of plus 11. Each death dread is equipped with two big shooters and two dread claws. So that's fantastic. So in two heavy support choices, you could have three death dreads and six killer cans and still have enough for a, a you know, Gorkonaut or Morkonaut if you wished. And that's a fair chunk of, chunk of points right there. Each Death Dread is equipped with two Big Shooters and two Dread Claws. Now the Big Shooters work as usual, they're a range 36 inch, Assault 3, Strength 5, AP 0 and Damage 1. Um, any model may replace any of its Big Shooters and or Dread Claws with a Rocket Launcher, Custom Mega Blaster, Scorcher or Dread Saw. So this Custom Mega Blaster then is a 24 inch Assault 1, Strength 8, AP minus 3 and a damage of D6. Uh, if you roll one or more unmodified hit rolls of one, the bearer suffers one mortal wound after all of this weapon's attacks have been resolved. Um, so that's nice that it's 24 in. It gives you a bit of anti-armor uh, weaponry, but you can inflict uh, mortal wounds um, on uh, the death dread. Uh, it might be worth going for the uh, rocket launchers instead which are the same strength, just a worst AP, but they do get a solid damage of three. Uh, the Scorchers are flamers as usual, eight inch range, assault D6, strength five, AP minus one, and a damage of one, and the weapon automatically hits its target. The melee weapons then, you've got the Dread Claw, which times the strength by two, so you're looking at strength 10, AP minus three, with, with a solid damage of three. Each time the bearer fights, it can make one additional attack with each Dread Claw it is equipped with, um, so that's excellent. And the Dread Saw, Strength plus four, so that's strength nine, AP minus two, and a damage of two. Each time the bear fights, it can make one additional attack with each Dread Claw, Dread Saw it is equipped with. Um, so what I'm looking at right here is it's got two attacks normal, three, four, five, six attacks. That's the way I'm looking at it with their specific um, profiles there. The abilities, here we go, Daka 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 explodes if a unit if a model in this unit is reduced to zero wounds, roll a d6 before removing the model from the battlefield. On a six, it explodes, and each unit within three inches suffers d3 mortal wounds. Dread Mob. The first time this unit is set up on the battlefield, all of its models must be placed within six inches of at least one other model from the unit. From that point onwards, each operates independently and is treated as a separate unit for all rules purposes. Keywords, Orc, Vehicle, Death Dreads. So there you go, that's uh, the Death Dread. Uh, that's all the rules. I think it's fantastic. It's great that you uh, you know, used to only be able to have one, I believe, and now you can have you know, up to three in one heavy support choice. Uh, they are gonna rip and tear their way through um, other units, either if they're all equipped with Dread Claws or Dread Saws. Uh, that's the way I'd run them uh, with their uh, weapon with their close combat weapons because of their weapon skill of three plus and because uh, those weapons boost the number of attacks I wouldn't be tempted to go for the uh, range weapons at all because the ballistic skill is five plus and yeah if, if you fire two rockets at five plus and you maybe hit with one that's all right but for me I'd rather have an extra attack and have a better than 50-50 chance of um, hitting something uh, with those attacks. The, the only d difficulty is getting them into close combat. The movement speed, I say, is only six inches. Uh, it's still um, all right. I mean, a Morkonaut, believe it or not, is faster at eight inches. And they just don't have that delivery method. You can't put them in trucks or wagons or or Shinnok uh, copters or anything like that. You can't transport them quickly across the battlefield. So they are gonna be slogging it at uh, six inches a turn to try and get into close combat. So dealing with them from range, try and take them down. I know that it's gonna be difficult for these because they are you know, got a good number of wounds and they've got a quite high toughness, um, but they don't have an invulnerable save. So pick them out with LAS cannons, maybe missile launchers. Uh, you know, if you've got a beastie weapon like a lance, like a, like a repulsor executioner um, cannon or something like that, then try and take them out from, from range, especially if you see them um, with just uh, close combat weapons. So there you go. What do you guys think of the Orc uh, Death Dread? Um, what do you think of the model and the rules? Uh, do you always uh, run your Orc army with them? 
please do put your thoughts and opinions down below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching for Gork and Mork.